Welcome to episode 83 of the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we pick a new story and we talk about it. This could be a movie, TV show, anime, manga, comic book, audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, and then we come back here and we talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined, as always, by Kyle Springer. Hello. How is it going? Hi, Kyle. How are you? Uh, it has been pretty good. It was a good weekend, I think. I mean, I, I guess I still have all of today, but yeah, it's it, it's yeah, it's been good. I have been playing nice. Death Stranding. There's a new oh. video game that came out. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna say it's a nude video game that came out because I'm, that's all I know I, I about mean, it. You do kind of get to see Norman Reedus's <laughs> butt, so. <laughs> you can make them take a shower. That's, that's good. That's a good weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you can also like responsibly like take care of Norman Reedus and not just make him fight things. I mean, I don't know if I'd say responsible. You can make him take a shower. You can make him pee. You can make him poop. Uh, and then you can make him drink monster energy drinks. <laughs> Is that the only beverage available to you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but okay all right norman reedus needs some help i accidentally went to another trivia night last night accidentally how does that happen it's like oh i've been had oh my god this is my mom's <laughs> <laughs> this was my mom's church fundraiser trivia night that she was volunteering okay. at and it's one of those ones where like you pay for a table of eight and like I know that okay. many other people interested in it, and she's like, "Well, there's just a a couple of my church members that are looking for somebody to fill out the table," and I'm like, "I, I don't want to do this with strangers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to constantly prove my knowledge based all these people I've never met. Like I just won't go." And then she calls me and she says, "I bought a bunch of raffle tickets. How about you come up here and you like pick whatever raffles we put the tickets in, like whatever baskets you it's want you trap. can have. I just want to give money to the church." It's a trap, Melissa. So I'm putting tickets in the <laughs> raffle baskets. Yeah, and then mom's like, "Well, the deacon might need some help," and I'm like, "I, I'm already here. I, I guess I'll stay here then, in case you guys need a hand." So I helped judge trivia sheets all night. There you go. And then I silently, quietly tried to participate in the whole thing myself, outside of real game rules. And these are not questions designed for a single 29-year-old woman to answer on her own. There you go. These are all <laughs> custom-written questions for large groups of older people. There's a lot of questions about, like, do you remember this one amusement park we had in the 1960s? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> That's funny. <sighs> well, what are we talking I about won't. this week, Melissa? We are talking about a new Netflix comedy show comedy called drama? Living With Yourself. Yeah, it's in there. It's a weird one. This star is Paul Rudd and Aisling B, and the creator's name is Timothy Greenberg, correct? I didn't write it down. Correct. I'm just trying to remember it from seeing the credits so many times. That is what Wikipedia is telling me right now. Timothy Greenberg. Good. Thank you. Yeah, we've been doing uh, more serious stuff lately. We were coming off our Halloween Horror Month. We watched Happy Valley last week, which is a very kind of gruesome sometimes crime mm -hmm. show. So I'm like, let's lighten it up. Let's get a comedy in here. Who is better to lift our spirits than Paul Rudd? Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. I had heard nothing but good things about this. How, like, how did you find out about it? I heard Paul Rudd guest starring on several comedy podcasts I listened to. And, you know, he was on like hot ones and things mm. like that. Like I'd seen him making the rounds to promote this thing, but I hadn't yet heard from anybody who had watched the thing because I think it okay. just came out in the last couple weeks. So I heard the promotional stuff for it, but not any firsthand review of sure. it. It's so like, well, I guess I'll be the first for myself. Sure. Yeah, I... I had heard, I think, a couple people mention it on some podcast, but they never got into, like, what it was about, really. Mm -hmm. All I knew was that it was Paul Rudd, yeah. and somehow there's a clone of him. And so it's Paul Rudd acting with himself. 
and as the yes. show as the show is uh entitled it's him living with himself uh but yeah i i didn't really <laughs> understand like is is this sci-fi like is 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 this going to be yeah. some like futuristic uh i robot type of thing where there's clones and stuff and it, yeah no it's not that it's like modern day yeah. day he just happens to get cloned uh and then he has to deal with it <laughs> so there we go yeah i also didn't really have a concept of what this was about i didn't even know how many paul rudds there were i knew there were at least two but i imagined there may be more you know like multiplicity I, or something like that i think and lots like, I knew of people it had to be... always hope that there's more paul rudds <laughs> just, right, just give one me for more each of us. <laughs> 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 i want to buy them in bulk at sam's club yeah <laughs> And I'm like, this will be at least comedy, but I don't know what other genre conventions are mixed in there. Like, I really went into this knowing very little. Mm -hmm. And it, the show was not really what I expected. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking on their Wikipedia page, and I, I see down at the, in the, like, reception thing that it... Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, it was scoring pretty well. Uh, but then one of the things that I, 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 I saw here, it says... The website's critical consensus reads strange, surreal, and surprising. Living with yourself yeah. can't quite sustain its high concept premise, but it remains engaging thanks to its clever writing and the sheer force of Paul Rudd's dueling performances. Mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of confused by this i don't feel like this has that of a high concept premise not really like it's pretty basic let's lay the premise out yeah. for the listener because they may be just as confused Go as we it. were when we first heard of the show so paul rudd he's been married to his wife for like 10 years they're struggling to have a kid you know he keeps putting off going to the fertility clinic to check that his sperm is okay. Mm -hmm. He's got this marketing job, but he's like kind of a slacker at it. And he's just sort of in this depressive state and he really doesn't feel well about anything. And this like hot shot at his office recommends him this spa. He's like, go here to the spa. This changed my life. This helped make me so successful. So Paul Rudd drains all of the funds him and his wife have for mm -hmm. this fertility treatment. And he goes to the spa and, and what the spa is supposed to do is clone you, make a better clone of you, send the clone out into the world with all of your exact same memories, and then kill you and bury you in the field. But yeah. he doesn't die. He is not successfully his, killed. His so he like wakes up wakes out up. of a grave in the woods. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so the clone has started taking over his life, and he's like, no, I'm still alive. And, like, the spa employees are like, oh, there's not supposed to be two of you. We messed up. Well, here's your money back. And so it's just, yeah. his name's Miles. So it's old Miles, I guess original recipe Miles, and new Miles trying to figure out how to share this it's life when new mile. Miles has all of these same memories. And he feels like this is is my wife this is my house this is my job yeah yeah so it's it's in it's interesting but i like i i just the, the something about the quote from rotten tomatoes kind of like not confuse me but i guess rubs me the wrong way of of like oh this is a high concept is something i was like no it's just he just happens to get cloned and he has to live with himself. Like, it's himself being like, I will say, I am both of these people. That's yes, weird. Yeah. I will say, this is less sitcom y than I imagined it would be. Yes. Which is fine. I really like what it turned out to be. It's just different than what I would have guessed this premise had been turned into. Mm hmm. I think. I think for me, yeah, I I ended up really liking it. Um, it was kind of odd at first because it is one mm -hmm. of those things of like, okay, this is looking like it's not going to be very sci-fi centric, which 
You mm-hmm. guys know me. I love the sci-fi stuff. Give me all the yeah. clones and the robots and the cyberpunks <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, but then I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be more down to earth and stuff like that. I don't know if that's really for me, but it ended yeah. up being really surprising of just like, this is really good. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're they're doing a fantastic job to... Uh, film it and make it engaging and make me like i kind of want to root for both of them but yeah i I think the show does a really good job of making you sympathetic towards everyone like Mm -hmm. it is definitely weird for his wife kate that all of a sudden there's a clone of her husband around that thinks he's also married to her like the show paints it as it's weird for her and it's weird for the clone who's like i don't know a life where i'm not married to you like, this is all I know. Mm-hmm. I have all these memories. I think I have been married to you for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So I I ended up enjoying it a lot. I would highly recommend it. It's only six episodes. Yeah. Uh, and they're all they're eight. Or eight. Yes. Uh, but they're all yeah, half they're an all hour. Approximately anywhere from 21 to 35 minutes. So, yeah, it is a pretty quick watch which is something i remember paul rudd saying in like promotional things he's like check it out it's not very long yeah <laughs> like this is a, beyond like his performance and aisling b's performance and the writing and everything he's like also pretty short easy to absorb yeah which i i think makes it easier for people to commit to right because if you're starting to get into a new netflix show mm-hmm. or something something on hulu or you want to get into game of of thrones it's like oh there's eight seasons and they're all uh an hour long if not more and and this is the no first Mm -hmm. one is 20 minutes that's it yeah go check it out um and of course it's paul rudd who doesn't like paul rudd go watch it like that yes i also want to say like paul rudd we know we love. I had heard Aisling B's name before, I've and I don't. Is she before. from The Fall? Ooh. I know her name, and I know she's in Let's like some her. big like British show. I don't know exactly what, but like I just knew her by name before. I'd never seen her. I loved her. Irish. I, I want to go see other things she's in now. What is she been in? Cardinal Burns, Dead. Boss, she won Gilded Balloon, So You Think You're Funny Award. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Is she not in the fall? Did I just name the biggest British show I can think she of? She is in the fall. Okay. So I, I've i seen her before, because I've seen that. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Who who was she in the fall? I I I have not seen it. <laughs> I'm like trying to rack my. I will now at some brain. point. Because goodness gracious! So I've seen the fall. It's it stars Jillian Anderson from the X Files. Um. She's the like main yes. detective. It's fantastic if if you like cat and mouse crime drama s- stuff. It's it's fantastic f- for that. But I I didn't recognize her. So there you go. Apparently, I've seen her mm. in something b- 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 before. I thought she was fantastic in this as well. Living with yourself. mm Hmm. All right, you want to do a little housekeeping before we get into the full discussion? Yeah. Uh, so housekeeping, yeah. we have multiple other podcasts. In case you guys did not know, you guys can go check them out at thewhatnots.com, yes. which is our website. Uh, we have the Captain's Log. We have the Reactor Core. We have Crossplay. Uh, you guys can find those on our website or wherever you get your podcasts. Just search for The Whatnots, and all of our shows will pop up right there uh and if you like what we, what we do patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us uh for as little as a dollar a month uh, you can get 
early mm-hmm. access to episodes. You can get access to the live streams of this, the review yeah. show. You can watch us record this live and be part of the discussion. Uh, let's see. We also have a whole bunch of exclusive content at the $3 tier. Uh, and we're going to be yes. recording a new one tomorrow for some trivia questions. M- Melissa is an yeah. avid trivia goer, as as she just m- m- mentioned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I, I thought it'd be fun. Hey, let's write each other some trivia questions. Let's see how smart we really yeah. are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, be on the lookout for that. But we also do want to give a big shout out to our patrons at the $5 tier. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Sam. And thank you, Christine, for helping us out. And thank keeping you. The mics on. Yeah, we love you guys a lot. There we go. House has been kept. Let's mm-hmm. move on. To yes. Spoilers. All right. We are in spoiler mode now. Um... Melissa, where do you want to mm-hmm. start? What stood out to you? Ah, uh, you- I think I wasn't expecting this to be as dramatic as it was. Okay, yeah. I guess dramatic's not the word for it necessarily, there's, there's but there's moments. a lot of yeah, there's a lot of emotional weight behind everything. It's less wacky. Than I would have guessed. Yes. At, at the premise of multiple Paul Rudds. <laughs> Paul's Rudd. Exactly. Um, yeah, I I was surprised by that too. I I, I think also also the the uh, the the weight that it it held to like those those dramatic yes. mo- mo- moments actually do feel dramatic. It's not just like oh here is this comedic actor that we all did oh that's just paul rudd good old paul rudd he's ant-man i saw him (laughs) in that one no like he actually has some moments where he like he does drama fantastically and it's not that i doubted him or it's like oh he can't do all that stuff but Mm -hmm. it's just like i think we've gotten used to seeing him in roles where he doesn't do that and so it's it's but he does it really well Yeah, yeah. When I think of Paul Rudd, I think of him. I think of him in Wet Hot American Summer, like him trying to put the lunch tray away, which is like the <laughs> the peak of physical comedy, one of the greatest bits I've ever seen. Yeah. But then I also Great. think of him just earlier this year in Endgame, where he's reunited mm-hmm. with his daughter. Like he's so good at that heart pulling, like really sincere, emotional, dramatic stuff. Right. And I'm glad that both parts of that were on full display in the show. It has a real range to it. I think that's what I wasn't expecting. Like the big range of everything. Again, I was like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. what a wacky fun premise. Right. Because it, it, it has that. And I like, like the show kind of plays on that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because there's a scene where New Miles takes some of Kate's hair to, like, the cloning spa, and they're like, no, we're not making you a new wife. Like, this is, <laughs> we're not making you a bride of Frankenstein. We don't do this to order. Like, we don't have any of our consent or anything. Like, yeah. you expect, ah, oh, and here's, here's the turn. Now there's going to be two of her running around, and then the show shuts it down. Like, no, <laughs> that's immoral. We wouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it plays really well with that. I, I, it has the sci-fi stuff. It has the drama. It Mm -hmm. it does have the wacky comedy stuff that you would also expect from Paul Rudd. And then it has this Mm -hmm. like heartfelt, like romantic plot line. This is almost a romantic comedy, but then yeah, there's the drama and the building tension between old mama miles and new mama 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 miles and so it balances everything really nicely um mm-hmm. which i yeah i absolutely commend it for that i was um not expecting the romantic comedy p- part but once it started i was like oh well duh yeah yeah this fits p- 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 perfectly in there uh, and that actually ended up being some of the like the 
bit better moments in the show, show mm-hmm. just their relationship is kind of the backbone of this entire show right yeah which is it's kind of why he g- g- goes to the spa in the first place um he's they're wanting to start a family but he's k- kind of in this depressive state uh, and then he doesn't mm. really want to go to the fertility center. He it's it, yeah. He just keeps postponing it and postponing it, and like he's just kind of drained of any kind of purpose in his life. Yeah, that and I like I they don't really address it, but I feel like a lot of gay guys would feel like that's almost emasculating to to mm. do that stuff. The, 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 there's this like. Uh, thing in society where guys just don't talk about stuff like that or like don't seek yeah. help if 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 the, if they think like hey maybe something is up here what do i do and they just like mm-hmm. oh well <laughs> right and then it turns out like i love hugh who's the guy from the Hugh's fertility clinic that characters. we keep hearing from <laughs> <laughs> so great <laughs> and again this is another scene where like you think the show is gonna go really comedic where miles gets into this like uh you know ejaculating chamber and it's got porn options there for him and everything like you expect okay here's the that scene where he goes through so like bad. a bunch yeah like he goes through like a bu- and he goes through a couple of them but like a bunch of weird porn titles and like weird aids and things and he's struggling with the equipment and like he can't get it in the cup like you're expecting full slapstick but it cuts really early (laughs) like okay good some dignity some restraint and then the joke of the entire thing is in the last episode Hugh calls him and he's like your test results are good we spent two years procrastinating this for you to find out, yes, they're fine. <laughs> it's that, but then I, I think a lot of the comedy is also kind of visual, like not mentioned in the script. It's mm-hmm. not something a character says. It's just the visual things happening, where it's happening, yes. stuff like that. Like he has yes. to, yeah, he has to go ej- ejaculate into this c- c- cup and he's in this room that almost looks like a dentist's room except there's pictures the giant pictures on the wall of babies just like that that's the thing you want to see fertility clinic yeah but that's the like just like like, that's the thing you want on the wall (laughs) while you're jacking there's a little cart there with like a tv (laughs) and dvds and playboys or whatever like the cart but you it's, take the cart away, and it's like, yeah, I don't recognize that this is uh, the sperm room. But just why? Just why babies. put why put pictures of babies Big on babies. the wall where you're supposed to masturbate? That's no, don't do that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so funny. It just it, it's just like. But it goes on. There's this big pair of baby eyes like looming over his head in yes. every shot of him in that room. It's, it's it's like if if you guys have seen the Luke Cage sh- show on Netflix, there's this uh, scene where one of the characters, he's like this big gangster guy and he has this big p- 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 portrait of Biggie behind him on on the wall. And it's, <laughs> and it's a specific painting where Biggie has on this crown uh in in the picture Mm. and there's this really well-known scene where the bad guy like steps in and walks into frame and it looks like the crown is on his on 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 his head because he's like the the kingpin of, of of the whole thing it's fantastic but it's it's like that but he's sitting in this <laughs> chair about to masturbate and there's this baby just yes. staring at him looming over him <laughs> just like when, when is this going to happen come on man <laughs> <laughs> when is it time for me yeah. <laughs> you're doing this for me miles <laughs> It's terrible, but I love it. <laughs> and 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 then the, 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 there's another scene similar to it uh, down the road in in the show when one of the wackiest bits 
uh, happens and the FDA comes and arrests him. I love the FDA. (laughs) The FDA (laughs) arrests him for cloning himself. It is the FDA that is, they're like theoretically in charge of human cloning. Like that is the jurisdiction this crime would go under. It's the FDA. So when I first find out in like episode one or two, like, oh no, oh no, there's two of us. Like this cloning operation went wrong and like one of them tries to call into the FDA and the other one stops him. Like the FDA follows up and it's this woman who's supposed to be in charge of like children's vitamins, but she's taken this human cloning rumor like And she's taking it so seriously because she knows if she can get that she can get a a promotion yeah, or who because knows human what cloning is like the x files of the fda, the FDA and then right. it's like that's not really your department and we're giving you no funding to do this but all right if you can prove something maybe we'll make this a real department yeah. so they <laughs> they arrest uh the old miles by mistake mm-hmm. thinking that he's the clone uh and yeah. then they they take him to their offices and they put him in the the b- 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 breast milk like pumping room because <laughs> yeah, because apparently only private room they have to keep him in the and it's it's one of those things he's like you have a breast p- 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 pumping r- room and they're, they're like yeah it's it's requ- it's requ- required for companies with over fifty em- employees in one spot. Like it's just like I, it's just like what? Okay, and so he's he's locked in this r- 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 room, but it is the like darkest, dingiest. R- like yeah. no one would want to be in in the, there. Uh, but then they have yeah, a it is ref- just like a concrete block in the basement just like well, yeah. this is the space we have yeah and just he's, put a fridge and like parents magazine in there he's he's stuck in it like it's almost the exact opposite of of the of the the room from the fertility center yeah but he's in there with basically nothing but a refrigerator which is filled with breast milk <laughs> and he thinks and he's gonna be locked doesn't work yeah, the sink doesn't work, so he's like, I haven't eaten in, like, two days. I need food. <laughs> so he's like, I wonder if I can eat this milk. <laughs> and it's yeah, just... It's, he drinks all of it. It's it's disgusting. <laughs> I saw it, and I was like, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was g- 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 It was g- 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 and, like, great. It was fantastic. Scene- where he like has an epiphany like he's laying there like handcuffed on the floor drinking breast milk reading parents magazines and he's like i do want a baby i am committing to yeah. having this baby with my wife yeah. i'm not leaving her alone again <sighs> but like that being said i think those are the like biggest slapstick moments just like those are the funniest things in the entire show um for the most part uh and then they just yeah they balance it with like the work plot of like hey he's now a better version of himself who is nailing it like he's back to his old form Mm -hmm. he's uh, up for these awards he's bringing in new clients uh and he has this like there's one whole a- a- episode where he has to pitch his idea to this community because they're they're gonna have to like go in and put in new cables and wires and stuff like that and it's this like rural mm. community of farmers who don't like well, what's this wifi what what is <laughs> why fee um and and so yeah he he's just, he's just like well we need to go in and do x y and z so you know something 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 but mm-hmm. he's like trying to relate to them and he c- comes up with this elaborate scheme to like figure it out but he gets caught and it like it's just this it, it's this like work tension of 
like, yeah, I, I want him to do better at work. I want him to be better because at first we saw him and he's just mm-hmm. a mess. Like he's yeah. depressed. Uh, he's not doing great at work. His marriage is in the dumps. And here he is like, uh, like doing fine. And so I thought they were going to take that and the show was eventually going to be about like him finding his groove again mm-hmm. and like the original miles getting back to that um that 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 state mm-hmm. where his marriage is fine he's doing good 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 at work and and stuff like that um and maybe there's this idea that the clone kind of realizes that he's the clone is like all right well i guess if you don't need me anymore maybe you should kill me or maybe i should just fly to thailand or something who knows Mm -hmm. um so i i thought there was gonna be something like that where like end of season one he kind of comes to terms and he gets back to his old self and then maybe in season two he realizes that there's some other aspect where he is like now fit failing at, and so he has to like convince his cologne to come mm-hmm. back, or he goes and visits the cologne or, or something. So it's, it's it's switched, but that is not what they did. So no, I like that. So there's perfect new miles Mm -hmm. and kate you know she's so disappointed with original miles that she thinks maybe i do need to be with new miles and they kind of like she's like oh i have a conference i have to go to and she does really have a conference which surprised me because the whole time i thought the conference was a lie it's a real conference she's going to which was just a pleasant little twist on that that it's not 100 percent a lie like i was expecting and she invites new Miles, like, come with me. They're putting me up in this hotel. We can spend this time together. And she spends this time with him. And she thinks it's going to be great. And she's not enjoying herself. And, like, she confesses to him, like, you're too perfect. Mm-hmm. I want the Miles that is a mess just like me. Like, the one that's all, like, broken up and angry and sad like me after everything that's happened. Yeah. You're too happy all the time. And it's, I don't like it. That doesn't work. It's kind of this idea. It's it's not even that she wants him to be like this sad sack and, and the, you know, mm. just this helpless p- person. But they were on the same page is the thing. Yes. And to like to everything see him, they've like, been through has weathered them. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything they've been through has like weathered them and left real marks on him. Like. New Miles remembers that, but he didn't live it. He doesn't have that baggage to him. He doesn't have that weight to him. And Kate finds that she misses that. Like, original Miles, he wasn't perfect, you know? He was a a disappointment in many ways, but, like, she could understand him because she had worn as many life scars as he had. Exactly. And they could relate to each other. I like that that's how it ends up, that she's like, I'm, no, no, you're too perfect and shiny and new. Mm -hmm. I can't act like I've been married for 10 years to somebody who's brand new. And I like that that displayed itself in a couple ways. Like, they don't really spell this out, but New Miles has these memories of everything in mm-hmm. his head, he doesn't really have any muscle memory, I think might be what they're talking about, where it's like, he's trying to dance with her, and she's like, I can't see myself dancing with you. And then when they're, like, trying to have sex, like, he can't do it. Like, he's not, like, he does it, but he's not good at it. Like, there's yeah. no <laughs> grace or rhythm or anything, because he's never done it. Well, he's he did ne- it one never time had with that yet. girl at the office when original Miles was like, I don't know, get out there, try and find your own girlfriend. But, like, he doesn't have the muscle memory in his brand new body to know how to, like, dance or have sex successfully yet. I like yeah, that it, touch to it. It, Yeah, I, I think especially in the dancing scene where he's like, oh, remember how we choreographed this whole mm-hmm. day, 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 and it, it, it looks, it looks like, she doesn't know it at first, but then you kind of put it together. It's like, no, I, I, I think he just doesn't know what he's 
doing. Maybe he's just being silly. And and then af- like almost immediately after that, we find out no, the real Miles they they <laughs> did this. He actually knows all the steps. She actually still knows all of the 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 the, mm. the, 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 the st- steps. And they have this kind of romantic moment of just like yes this is it this is what we missed this is what we need to get back back to she can't dance with new miles because she never did like Mm -hmm. she knows he thinks oh we used to do this dance together and she's like no i didn't this isn't you you're brand new your feet never took those steps your arms never did that it's not real as much as you think it is and because i've it's like, I can't dance with you because I never did. Like, it doesn't work for her. And then she gets back with original Miles and she's like, this is the man I know. This is the man who I know how to do things with. Everything is worn into him and is authentic. And then they go through this entire choreographed dance scene. And it's just like them alone in their house in the middle of the day. Yeah. Like, there's nothing else romantic about it except that it's the two of... And, like, he has to, like, pull up the so- like the song on her phone and he can't connect to the internet and it takes him a second. And he's like, okay, I got it. And then they just go into this beautiful dance together. Yeah. You know they must not have done in the last 10 years, but they both still remember it because they were both really there doing it with each mm-hmm. other. Yeah, that was a nice touch for sure. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about, because one of the things when they do the whole clone stuff, there's scenes of them together and stuff like that, but oftentimes the clones are separated or they're they are doing their own thing and eventually they meet up. And then they do this thing where one a- a- episode is entirely w- oh, yeah. one of their per- perspectives. And then the start of the next one takes like the first five minutes to be like, hey, here's the everything that you just saw, but in a new perspective. How did you like the, that mm-hmm. stuff? I like that a lot. I liked mm-hmm. how this show played with those perspectives of original Miles and new Miles and Kate's perspective on the whole thing. Like there's episodes that follow Kate. There's an episode where they mm-hmm. go all the way back to like them years ago, like three or four years ago in their marriage when they like first bought their house and then it yeah. slowly works itself back up to modern day. I liked all the perspective switching. I like that kind of back and forth twisty narrative that they have. The only thing that kind of bugged me is that sometimes they are very specific about when things happened, but also like, I feel like I left the series not having a great sense of how long ago was it that he went and got cloned? Like yeah. maybe it was there and I just wasn't tracking it closely enough, but like Kate comes out at the end of the final episode and says, I'm pregnant. I have no way to prove which one of you it was. And I'm like, well, hold on. Didn't she just have sex with original miles? Like, two or three days ago but she well she had sex with new miles two or three days ago but she had sex with original miles after that party which was like a week week and a half ago like it really seems implausible that it's like could be new miles like you wouldn't know if it happened like three days ago i think it's been some time was that longer ago than i think it is i think so yeah it seemed like it wasn't that long it seemed like it was just a couple days yeah, because I when when she said that too, I was like, wait a minute, it, it like at first at first I, 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 I at first I was being really dumb and being like, it hasn't been nine months. Are you kidding me? And I was like, oh wait, that's not how it works. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I mean, it's been at least a couple weeks. I mean, I, 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 I guess we don't know exactly, and maybe it's not super important exactly, but it has mm-hmm. been some time, uh, and she mm-hmm. has had sex with both of them, so. I just feel like she had sex with new one so close to when she comes out with that reveal, and I'm like, that, does that make sense? Have I lost track of what how many days have gone by? Because I was really convinced, like, that was, like, four days ago, Max. Like, I mm-hmm. couldn't get a handle on, okay, 
exactly how many days has it been. And I don't know if outside of that one plot point, if it really matters. But I, was just, I just wish I had something more like... So And there's things they're building towards, but it's not like it's a date. It's not like, well, we have to... The community will vote on putting up the cell phone towers in two weeks' time. It doesn't get that specific. So there's yeah. very little that you have to, like, mark the passage of time with. So there's been movies and shows out there like Two Men and a Baby. I think that, that that's how this starts. It's three men and a baby. Oh, I know, I know, but still. D- that's well, don't how it leave starts. one of them out. All three of them play Fine. an important role in men. that baby's okay. upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> There's my two dads. <laughs> Imagine this show is just like the the pilot of of how that gets made now we have a brand new show of two and a half men it's two it's paul Rudd and their baby kid it's, like, it's within the same canon but it's just a complete like it now it is the wacky dad sitcom yeah just takes a big turn completely <laughs> rebrands itself <laughs> do you think they're dads do you think there is going to be a season two? Because I think the emotional beats of this story, like the Miles's and the Kate storyline, reaches a good ending point. But there's a I... lot of stuff like with Miles' professional life that is up in the air. Like he lied, like he spun the story about like, oh, Broadcoms, you know, they're they put their cell phone towers up in a field by my grandpa's farm, and he died of cancer a year later, and that wins like all of these community members to okay, we'll take the Hillstom Telecom cell phone towers in our community instead of the other ones. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a whatever the company was, Broadcom is like one of the guys is like, I saw what you did. That's libel. We're gonna get you for that. And then we don't see that guy again. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't see... Like, there's a lot of professional stuff left up in the air. The whole thing with, like, the guy from the Hilston Corporation. (laughs) Just like, I don't care how you cheat as long as you cheat well. And then he sends him an entire pig in a box. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Pig in a box. So, so creepy. You've heard of pig in a blanket. (laughs) Wait till you get pig in a box. (laughs) The delicious taste of box combined with the taste of pig that you love. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I I, I don't necessarily need a season two. That being said, yeah, mm-hmm. I think there has been some stuff left in the wake mm-hmm. of season one that maybe needs wrapping up. And I think yes. it's going to be a thing of like season two is going to kind of uh wrap those up tie them up okay now we need to work together to set things right at work uh we need to convince the Mm -hmm. fda that we're not a clone uh we need to get them off of our tail we need to Mm -hmm. deal with x y and z and you know you know figure it all out um in the meantime of like, well, who is the real father? Uh, mm-hmm. Like, what do we do if it's the clones? Uh, what do we do if it's my, like, do, the, the, like there, there is still problems and qu- questions. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm actually kind of fine if there isn't one, like they, they worked things out enough yeah. where I'm 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 like yeah I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, I I also feel satisfied. Like I don't need a season two except for that my brain knows. Well, you talked about all that stuff with his professional life, and now where does that go? Huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and then like what what does the coworker do do, do now that he Dan. knows he's yeah. a clone? Like is something yes, more gonna happen there? Yes, because it happened for him successfully, and new Miles like takes him out to the woods and makes him dig with his Shows bare hands until he bodies. finds his own original body. Yeah, so he, he just has I, this like again, existential talking about the range of the show crisis. Yeah, yeah, I like when it got like really intense and creepy. Like there's that scene, and then there's the scene where Mister Hilston 
tells that backstory to Miles of like, when I was a child in the concentration camps, like they lined yeah. all of us up to find out which boy had stolen a ration. And I pointed to the boy and then he was killed. But they never knew I was really the one who took the ration. Like it's, it comes out of nowhere. And it's this right. very like deep, intense, like frightening story. And it, you don't know, like Miles and the audience, like nobody knows what to do with it. And I think, and it's such a an ominous thing. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen that come back. Like, is that something he's still thinking about? Because he does pretty much, re he kills his new self at the end, which I like. That he suffocates him with a pillow and then he's like, oh no, he can't be dead. And then he like gives him mouth to mouth resuscitation to bring him back. Yeah. I like that he, he gets to... I like that duality of I will kill my new self and also the mouth to mouth resuscitation is within a narrative used as something akin to a kiss, right? Yeah. Almost yeah. anything you can name where you've seen resuscitation, it leads to like a kissing situation. So this act of killing and loving his new self, that's I think was a, a really point, great yeah. way to like tie up everything. Like that's... That is it. That is their relationship right there embodied in these couple of actions. Yeah. I hate you, but you're me, so I love you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even down to the fact that he suffocates him. Like, he tries to shoot him. He tries to hit him with an axe. It is the method of death that completely hides his face, that removes his identity. That's the one Miles picks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. That's a... Like, it's really, it's very dark to talk about him killing his clone, but I'm like, well, as long yeah. as we're here, I think I you did pick a very narratively it, yeah. appropriate way of death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, and like, I didn't know how the show was going to wrap up because it's got so many different emotions it's playing with. I'm like, are are you just going to kill the clone? Is that how this is going to go? Is he, he going to be buried in the woods just like we saw original Miles breaking out of the dirt mm -hmm. at the beginning of the first episode? Yeah. And, or it's are like, we going to go for the what, more... What, 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 what if he like suffocates him and buries him, except he didn't actually fully suffocate him? He just like knocked him out. <laughs> Again. <yeah. laughs> and it's the same thing. Yeah, because... Because I went into the show thinking it was going to be more of a sitcom than it was. And it gets darker. It gets more dramatic and more emotional. Mm -hmm. And then it ends with more of a sitcom ending than I would have expected from where I found that the show actually was. Yeah. But I like it. It's. I don't think there's anything in the show that feels jarring. It plays with a lot, a lot of different emotional beats. And I think it manages them pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I, I I liked the e e e ending. I think they had a missed opportunity to have the last la 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 line in the thing as they're all like, "I'm having a baby! Oh my god, we're gonna be parents!" And they all have a a, a yeah hug to her for her to kind of realize that the credenza is smashed and be and and ah! and, and, and her going is that my credenza and it just stops there <laughs> i think that would have been she fantastic saw the credenza. She, and... she had to have to walk in but still just like to have it like I have this like moment of like oh my god it's it's great we're gonna be a family and then wait a minute is that my credenza <laughs> i think what the credenza represents is tradition so she gets the credenza because her parents had one just like it mm -hmm. and her parents carved their names into the drawer so that's exactly what she wants to do with miles it, but like the credenza, like, he's always hitting his leg on it. He was always bumping into it. Like, it never really fits into their home. Yeah. And then when things aren't working out with original Miles, she's like, well, maybe new Miles wants to hold on to the credenza. It's still his name in it. And then they end up both just destroying it. And I think that is a, a breakdown of we cannot do things a traditional old fashioned by the book way we just can't yeah. we love each other but these old school 
representations of how a traditional marriage works are completely out the window. This is no right. longer traditional marriage. It's it's kind of this moment of camaraderie when they're like trying to fight yeah. one another and then like one of them hits it with with the axe and then does a couple m- 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 more t- times it's like all right now here y- your turn <laughs> and they 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 both start a- attacking it and it's just like okay <laughs> show us how you really feel <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I liked it. I also I think like the, the moment. I like. Yeah, I like the flashback episodes to earlier in their marriage, which are mostly from Kate's point of view. And we mm-hmm. see her and she's an architect and we see one of her partners in this architecture business. They're they're at some estate sale and that's where they get the credenza. And she's the friends helping her load the credenza into the car and the friends As making fun stealing of her. For, it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the friend's <laughs> making fun of her for, like, having this, like, oh, I've got a husband and I'm going to have a kid and we're going to have this, you know, old traditional furniture in this house in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. And the friend's, like, you know, I've had three girlfriends <laughs> recently. The friend's, like, a little bit more modern and, like, vi- d- like there's nothing traditional and by the book and cute and suburban about her. Yeah. And she's making fun of Kate about it. It's like, oh, do you have to be, like, independent and badass? And Kate is like, I am taking this credenza to my house with my husband, and you're not going to tell me no, and you're not going to stop me. And the friend's like, okay, okay that was badass. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is something This is something I've been feeling lately. Like, I feel like such a chump for wanting the, <laughs> I want a cute house in the suburbs with a husband and two kids and a large dog. <laughs> and we're all going to have, like, the group Halloween costumes and the group Christmas photos, or we're going to send the Christmas card to everyone. <laughs> like, that very picturesque, yeah. like, Hallmark Channel Martha Stewart lifestyle is the one I really want. And Kate's friend is trying to tell her, like, this is just the what everybody else is feeding to you. You don't really want this. And Kate's like, no, I do. I do. I don't want the house just because Miles picked it out for me. I want the house. And I feel like I'm trying to express this to people like, no, society didn't make, yeah, society didn't make me want this. Like, I want the cute suburban house. Let me want the cute suburban house. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wonder, because after, I mean, that flashback episode is really all we see of her at work like i'm wondering if her friend because it looked like her for her business partner was kind of catching on that she might have been yes like having some trouble with her marriage and maybe seeing someone new but then we don't see her again Mm -hmm. again. it's one of those characters that just like they're there for an a- 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 episode, and then they're not there. But I kind of want to follow and the, up the with The friend them. ended up, like, yeah, and the friend ended up, like, marrying this woman and settling down and having two kids and a dog. And she's got the stickers on the back of the car of two moms and two kids and a dog. And so she's become what she was railing against a couple years ago. Yeah. And she's not a major character, but I want to know, like, what is your perspective now? Like, what made you change your mind? How do you feel now about Kate wanting to do these things? Yeah, can, and I don't. Can she be? And like some when she's kind of, of peer- horse of uh, advice of, hey, yeah. now we have this non-traditional marriage and la 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 life. How would you deal with this? Mm-hmm. Well, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. There is a lot. I like all the supporting players in the show mm-hmm. a lot. Like, I was really hoping we'd get back to those guys who ran the spa. I was really interested yeah. in what their lives were. Yeah. I would like to see more of that. Maybe they have a run in with the FDA. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to, and like, cause to that see that happen. kind of. And their business kind of shuttered up, like, after that incident with Miles. Like, they kind of closed it. And, like, what are they doing with their lives now? Because a lot of the show is kind of about, like, 
settling down and being successful and providing for family and all the stress that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Miles kind of inadvertently ruined the careers of those two guys running the cloning spa. What are they doing now? We see that one of them has a little girl. Like, how are they living? Does Miles, and, you know, feel any kind of like sympathy or guilt about that? I don't know. Uh... If you kind of got this vibe, the subtext I was writing was maybe those two g- 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 guys were also partners. Like they they were like not just business p- 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 partners, but they were potentially g- g- gay and that was their family. I, I remember be- like. So like I think he asks and this is real early in the sh- series so i watched this like a week ago and i don't totally remember i think Mm -hmm. he asked if there's a mom around and like the guy seems sad when he says there's not a mom so i got the impression like like he was with a wife and the wife died and so now maybe the other guy is just like a a full house uncle like living with them and helping them out could be that i i kind of got the vibe that they were together though um which would be another interesting twist and an, I mean I guess that's not a twist but like another interesting point of conversation because now if that is true and they are seeking advice of like hey now Miles and his wife has this untraditional marriage and stuff like that here's mm-hmm. Paul Rudd having to basically like like hey you're two dads. How do <laughs> us two dads make it? <laughs> I do oh. kind of like the comedy of social foibles that is these like two dads through the result of cloning approaching like a a same sex couple who like ad- adopted a child or whatever. Yeah, and like, and we who are in the same boat, and the other couple's to be like, the one that, no, like, we're not, no. Yeah, and also the ones that happen to be the ones that made the clone and stuff like that. So it's th- it's mm-hmm. like you guys aren't really even together. Like you, your your situation is not like ours. Like you yes, ruined our yeah. business. Like stop asking us for advice. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're not the same. <laughs> I yeah, I I. That is a good point. I am interested to see if there's a second season. Like, we have these two co-dads that are not a couple. How <laughs> right, would they yeah. interact with other same-sex couples who are right, raising yeah. kids out there? And I do like the idea of, like, you're the cl- you like us. They're like, no, 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 not really. But I guess we see how there is nobody like you. You kind of do only have us to turn to. All right, let's... Let's break this down. Let's see what we can do about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or or if they see it as like a new business venture of like counseling. What if we do marriage counseling? <laughs> 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 we'll charge you a fee to <laughs> to do this stuff. Who knows? Um <laughs> yeah, or or if uh they do come up with like a new business adventure and have to come up with some marketing thing and end up hiring the company that Paul Rudd works for and he is the mm-hmm. one that's making their, their, their thing but doesn't know it yet and then like finally has to go meet them and he's like oh <laughs> it's you <laughs> uh, you know you know who I just realized we haven't talked about because she's only in the beginning of the series and then kind of vanishes and isn't talked about again is Paul Rudd's half sister. Mm-hmm. She's Paul only Rudd in like two episodes sister. and I really liked her, but then she does kind of disappear. That's the thing about the show is that I think like the main dynamic of Miles and Miles and Kate ends really well. But then I stop mm-hmm. and I think, well, what about that thing and that thing and this other thing? Like, I need another season to, like, fill that out. Yeah. I want to see, like, how his sister reacts to all of this. Yeah. I g- 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 guess I can see them doing maybe one more season to kind of wrap everything up. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, this, all, mm-hmm. like, as much as I'm satisfied with where it ends, maybe it also felt like a, a midway point. 
who knows mm -hmm. yeah um anything else that you wanted to talk about with living with yourself uh. <laughs> oh, I really liked it and we've been talking a lot about little writing tricks and the performances are all great but like the way it uses music is fantastic. There's mm -hmm. a lot of the set dressing things that are really great. Like, I love the congrats sign that's always outside at the TGI Fridays that the <laughs> entire company goes to when they need to celebrate anything. Congrats. I like that sign. Miles. That's Like, they have... They have the whole wall painted in the conference room with this marketing firm, and it's all stuff like 110% and do it all before 9 a.m. I forget the specifics, but it's all this, like, in-your-face, like, aggressively successful mantras. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. There's a yeah, lot I, of details in here I really like. I liked the music. Um, it... it that being said, I felt like it was one of the pieces that maybe stood out in not the best way. It, uh, hmm. Like, it, the music maybe made it seem more like a sci-fi. Like, it, it had this aspect that there's going to be... Look, I, the, the like, oh. opening theme song, the, just the, the way it sounds seemed okay. to me like it was going to be focusing excuse me uh more on the like science fiction aspects it, of it is it this. is kind of a a techno-y sounding it's song. techno yeah. and it can c c kind of get tense cuz they bring it back in those tense moments mm -hmm. where he's uh kind of b b b butting heads with the clone and he's like you fuck my wife i'm gonna come kill you you ma -ma 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 -ma. and you you you, you hear this like mm -hmm. weird techno not, it's not techno but just you, right like just like this weird like electronic yeah pulsating thing where it's like uh oh something's about to happen now um but it, it's, I it's not if like it's... it's not like so intense it's... or it's not so creepy mm -hmm. but it's it, it's it's fine. I liked it, but it was just like, hmm, okay. I wonder if the music is kind of techno-y sounding to suggest not like this hard science fiction that the show might be leaning into, but like it is inorganic. Yeah. And so it's kind of there to represent new miles like there's no re the so and i don't know anything about music but it would sound to me like there's no real instruments in there it is all like virtual synthesizers pianos or and, virtual yeah. yes yes like it is all synthesized just like new miles is interesting that is a good point hmm. cool good stuff good stuff i think that's all i have to say on living yeah. with yourself. Um, I really liked it. It is a fun watch. It's got a lot of surprises in it. I think it's very well done. I love Aisling B now, having never had seen her before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, apparently I've seen her in the fall, and I just didn't realize it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I thought she did fantastic mm -hmm. as well. If you had to recommend something else to people that might like or that liked this, what would you recommend? Uh, you, if you want more of Paul Rudd, you have to go watch Wet Hot American Summer, which I think mm -hmm. is one of his earliest roles. He's excellent in this film. He's it's, fantastic. He's like, uh, he is playing, and he's like in his 20s, and he's playing like a 16, 17-year-old camper at this you know, last day of summer camp, you know, so all your wild oats now. It's like the whole movie's a parody of the summer camp movies. And there's a scene where, like, he's asked to put away his lunch tray in the mess hall, and he just refuses to do it, and he's just like, ugh, ugh, fine, ugh. And he's just like, it's such a physical act for him to walk <laughs> across the room and set the tray down. What he does with it is magnificent. And we talked about that on episode 19 of the review show. Mm -hmm. 
And I'd also like to recommend what we talked about in episode 69, which is the comic Sex Criminals. I think these are... I think these are thematically similar to each other and that you have this kind of could be really silly, like kind of sci-fi fantastical premise, but that's just a backdrop to these real raw emotional stories about growing up and having relationships. Yeah. I think that's a good call. Uh, I would actually like to recommend a comic that is maybe more on the fantastical side uh, it is mm. called Chew. Uh, it is a comic book oh. about a person that uh, when he eats food, he gets a psychic impression of the of the food. So if he eats a steak, right, he sees the cow's last moments. He sees what it ate for its last meal. He sees it g- g- getting <laughs> b- 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 butchered. B- bless you. Um, and, and so, yeah, like you, like he, he has these, these strange powers, but mm-hmm. he works for the FDA. And so he, the, as, as <laughs> an a- a- agent of the FDA, he goes ar- 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 around arresting people and stuff like that and having to solve crimes by eating strange things of just like hey there's a dead body here um we're gonna have you eat his fingernail uh so you can figure (laughs) out what happened to him or like the only thing that's left of this person that we found is their ear you're gonna need to eat that or here's a piece of their poop and you're gonna have to eat that and and you know it's just (sighs) it's crazy stuff like that but if you liked the more slapstick moments of this show i think uh something like chew is going to be right up your alley Mm. and side note on that since i know melissa and i I, I are uh big lost fans the two main characters in the comic chew are based off of miles and sawyer uh, when they do the flash sideways and they're both cops. Mm. Uh, so that is yes. who they are based off of. So if you're a lost fan like us, you might enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I have three pitches what we will do next time this next week yes um first up pitch number one is called carol and tuesday this is a carol and tuesday carol and tuesday it is an anime Mm. Uh, about these two women, one of which uh, is moving into the big city to pursue her career in music. While she is there, uh, she meets another woman who is more of a street performer, uh, and they end up teaming up and uh, partnering up and becoming a musical act. To g- oh. g- 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 together, um, and I I wanted to check this one out because it is directed by Senichiro Watanabe uh, and Mont- ah M- 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 Motonobu Hori, um, but Watanabe you guys might know from stuff like Cowboy Bebop or Samurai Champloo or Space Dandy. But we have also covered a couple things on the review show by Sinichiro Watanabe. Uh, mm-hmm. Terror in Resonance is one of them. Uh, but maybe most closely related to this is Kids on the Slope, which is one of my all-time yeah. favorite animes. Um, and Watanabe always does a fantastic job uh, picking... Picking music or having his shows um, really be influenced by music. Um, 
Mm. So I, I'm, I'm interested in checking that one out. It is 24 episodes, though, so it's a little bit of a longer uh, one. But since we do sometimes watch about, like, 13-episode uh, mm. TV shows that are an hour long, this is about the same, same length. So mm -hmm. there you go. Carol and Tuesday. Pitch number one. Mm -hmm. Pitch number two, I wanted to, to watch season one of Ben 10. Have you Ooh! heard of this car car cartoon? Have, have, have you heard of this cartoon? Oh, oh I, I know Ben 10. I never really watched it. Okay. But I've, I'm familiar with the concept and I've seen bits of it. And it seems like something people have, like, a lot of genuine admiration for. Like, it's not just a nostalgic favorite. Like, people seem to think, oh, no, Ben 10 is very good. Yeah, Ben Ben 10 is very g -g good. Uh, this is one of my favorite cartoons. I've seen, uh, th well, there's actually multiple Ben 10 cartoons. I want to watch the original uh, one, which is from 2005 is when it got started mm -hmm. uh season one is only 13 episodes and you can find it on mm -hmm. hulu this is about a young oh, hulu. boy okay yeah this is about a young boy uh who is on summer vacation with his sister and his grandpa uh, and they are out in the woods, they're going camping, and he's just having the worst time because he wants to be with his mm -hmm. friends playing video g g g games, d doing stuff like that. Meanwhile, he's in the middle of nowhere. Um, but one night while they are out camping, there is something that crashes to Earth. It is this meteor-looking thing. He goes to check it out, and he discovers this watch-like device, and it attaches mm -hmm. to, to, to him, and it won't let g g go. But this watch gives him the power to transform into ten different I I aliens uh, for, a short, for a short amount of time. So that's where they get the name Ben 10. Mm -hmm. um, and then he ends up g g g g g g g g going on a big adventure uh, to save the galaxy. And there's a a aliens a t a attacking and stuff like that. And it is great. It is a children's <laughs> cartoon that was on Cartoon Network made by Man of Action. I really like yeah. their stuff. So that's pitch number two. Ben 10. Season one of Ben 10. Pitch number three is a comic book. I want to read volumes one through three, which is all 12 issues of a comic series called Mech Cadet U. Um, this is a comic from Boom Studios written by Greg Pak and art by Tak Takashi Miyazawa. Uh, and the synopsis says, once a year, once a year, giant robots from outer space come to Earth and bond with young cadets from the elite Sky Core Academy to defend the world from terrifying aliens known as the Sharg. Uh, it's a great honor to be chosen, but this year, well, the wrong kid was picked. <laughs> So Met Cadet U, that's spelled M-E-C-H space C-A-D-E-T space Y-U. Met Cadet U, and that is on uh, Comixology Unlimited. You can read all three of those there. These are some nice looking robots. Yeah. Yeah, so it, this is going to kind of be a love letter to stuff like McCoy cross and gundam or pacific rim you know if, if you're into stuff like that but mm -hmm. also like a children's cartoon version of that so it's kind of along the same lines of ben 10 uh where, where he he has this uh special de 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 device to help him uh 
fend off an alien invasion. So, I think those will be fun. Pitch number one yeah. was Carol and Tuesday. Seems like a good music-inspired anime by Shinichiro Watanabe. Pitch number two was Ben 10. I'm going to watch season one, which is 13 episodes on Hulu. Pitch number three was volumes one through three of Met Cadet U. I think it's about time I... I really sat down and looked at Ben 10. Like it's yeah. always been around and like I think my brother Ooh. watched it but I've never really watched it myself. It's kind of a big hole in my cartoon knowledge. Okay. So let's fix that. Good stuff. Let's go with Ben 10 season 1. As I mentioned, it's available on Hulu. Uh, so you guys can watch along at home and check it out there. That's what we'll be up to. For this next week. Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And I am at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find us at The Whatnots on Twitter. Uh, if you guys want to stay up to date with all of our shows and stuff, we post on there. Uh, that being said, go like, share, subscribe, you know the deal. Uh, go support us on Patreon if you like what we do, patreon.com slash the whatnots. But with that said, we will get out of here and we will be back next week. Uh, this has been episode 83 of the Whatnots Review Show. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out our show. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have also seen Living With Yourself, uh, let us know in the comments below what you thought uh, or what you think Paul Rudd should do next uh, in the show. Should there be a season two? Who knows? We'll see. Uh, in the meantime, go subscribe to our channel right up there uh, and go watch one of our other videos right down here because we've got all sorts of stuff for you to check out. Uh, and we hope you enjoy more than just this show because we have all sorts of other podcasts as well. But until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.